Former President George W. Bush underwent a procedure Tuesday morning to have a stent inserted after a blockage was discovered in an artery in his heart. We're Skyping with Dr. Jonathan Reiner of George Washington Medical Faculty Associates to learn more about this type of procedure. Doctor, what is a stent and when is it needed? So think of a stent as sort of a metallic scaffold. Uh, it's uh, very small and it's designed to fit inside a coronary artery which is on the order of uh, three to four millimeters in diameter. So a, a stent is this basically slotted tube made of uh, either stainless steel or more commonly now an alloy or a combination of alloys and it's mounted on a balloon and uh, it's designed to basically prop open a coronary artery usually in the setting of atherosclerosis, you know, hardening of the arteries or cholesterol blockages. How is something like this discovered? For former President Bush, it was during an annual checkup. Is that the usual way people find a blockage? No, actually, typically most patients who are treated for a narrowing are having some form of symptom. Uh, we don't know how uh, the former president was uh, uh, diagnosed. We don't know whether he was having symptoms prior to the event. Uh, we know as recently as May, he rode in, I believe, a 100-kilometer uh, bicycle ride. So we know that he's extremely fit and, and has evidently felt uh, quite well. We don't know uh, what, if anything, prompted the most recent evaluation. Well, that's interesting that you bring that up. We've seen former President Bush riding bikes and clearing brush. He was always very athletic. Does, is the message is that this can happen to anyone? Well, I think the message is that it happens to many people. Uh, atherosclerotic heart disease has uh, been the number one killer of people in the United States uh, every year uh, since 1900, with the exception of 1918 when uh, the flu pandemic uh, killed more people. So the message is that it is a uh, ubiquitous problem. It affects both men and women, and uh, it's extremely common. And it's caused by, or things that we can do to prevent it are? A variety of things. It's caused by some genetic factors that we can't change, your family history. Uh, for example, you know, how your body handles substances like cholesterol. But it's also uh, impacted by uh, processes that we can affect and we, we can modify, like blood pressure, like serum cholesterol, you know, like diet, uh, and uh, smoking in both patients with a history of heart disease and in patients who haven't had a history of heart disease, we try hard to minimize these risk factors. Putting in a stent, is that a difficult procedure? Uh, it took me about 10 years to learn how to do it. Stents, which came on the market in the United States in the early 1990s, made angioplasty safer. Uh, it allowed us to treat more, and, uh, more types of vessels, more complex blockages. Uh, it um, has saved many people from needing uh, heart bypass surgery and uh, in many patients it can be done almost as an outpatient procedure. Here at GW we do this procedure from the radial artery. We do it through a two millimeter puncture in the wrist. Uh, we do it uh, sometimes with same day discharge so you can have your heart fixed in the morning and be home uh, watching the evening news in the uh, evening. Are you uh, under anesthesia when the procedure takes place? Yeah, we use something that is euphemistically called conscious sedation, uh, which uh, for most, most patients means they sleep during the procedure. Usually a combination of uh, a medicine, uh, a Valium-like injectable medicine, and then also an injectable narcotic. Most patients wake up and say, Are you, have you started yet? And we're already done. And you said something interesting. You can work through the wrist and place yeah. it in the heart. Yeah, so, so the standard way for doing this in most places in the country is to stick the big artery at the top of the leg, the femoral artery. And uh, we here at GW, as well as uh, some other sites around the country, have moved away from doing that because the wrist uh, is a safer procedure. There's less bleeding with it. And also patients can get up and ambulate, walk around almost immediately. We think that it's uh, safer and it's better for the patients. Is this a precursor to other procedures? Well, not necessarily. You know, I think um, when we uh, treat a coronary blockage, uh, 
Sometimes there's another blockage uh, that uh, needs to be treated, and uh, often we'll do that in a different sitting. More often, when we identify a narrowing and we treat it with a stent, we redouble our efforts to reduce their risk factors for progression of coronary disease, uh, like uh, driving the cholesterol down aggressively with uh, statin medications. Uh, and if a, a patient uh, has diabetes, getting their diabetes under control. So we really try to modify the risk factors, and for really the vast majority of patients, that's a very, very effective at preventing a recurrence or the need for another procedure. So, you know, I guess to answer your question, it's not necessarily a slippery slope. Is this now thought of as a routine procedure? Um, you know, I think so. There are about uh, 650,000 of these procedures done every year in the United States, so I think that would make it uh, pretty routine. I think for any patient undergoing this procedure, it's uh, a significant event in their life. So I wouldn't minimize the importance of this to the patient, but uh, we do a lot of it and uh, we've been doing it now for a long time. It is a significant event in people's lives, but is it also, by the time it's discovered, do they have a choice? Well, it depends on the clinical circumstances. You know, I think, you know, many patients who present with a problem, have an acute problem that needs to be fixed, and there's sort of less of a, a, a decision to be made in that, in that circumstance. No, but occasionally there is a choice, and uh, some patients do quite well with, with medical therapy without the use of a stent. And if someone has any concerns, what should they look for? What should they be thinking about? Well, you know, the classic symptoms of, of, of coronary disease uh, include chest pain or chest tightness or chest pressure. Uh, often they're elicited by exercise. Some patients present with different symptoms. Some patients present with just a sort of a general feeling of an unease in their chest or some arm discomfort. Some patients may only have uh, shortness of breath or a decrease in their exercise tolerance. And the key thing is that uh, if you develop symptoms, uh, go see your doc. And uh, if you don't have symptoms, you should know all your risk factors, and you should know your cholesterol, you should know your blood pressure, uh, and see your doc, and uh, take care of yourself.